kitchen for lunch two days, but we've been working gate five all week, and we've gone through a lot of wonderful helpers and volunteers and community members. We are so thankful. We um, also are pleased that we are going to have our community meal for the first time back in our own facility as we, I believe, knock on wood, have completed all of the repairs. Woohoo! Well, except for the toilets. Except the toilets. We still need a few repairs on toilets. We're troubleshooting a few issues, but we've gotten a few extra parts, and I think we have one bathroom back up and running. We'll see about the other. But other than that, things are moving along. We're very thankful. So please spread the word, invite people to come to check out our fellowship hall and kitchen that looks pretty much exactly the same as it used to, uh, except for some extra tile. We also have a number of sign-up sheets now that the fair is dying down. We have more opportunities to volunteer. Yay! Yay! So we have our Meals on Wheels coming up August 28th through September 1st. If you're able to do the lunch deliveries, please sign up. We can use one person to drive and one person to navigate. It works really well if you have two people. So we'll pass this sign up sheet around. We have also been asked to see if we're able to host a funeral luncheon this Saturday. Uh, we are keeping a fairly simple menu with cold cut sandwiches and chips and things like that. So if you're able to help at all, please sign up, uh, whether that is actually making something or helping in the kitchen or buying supplies. It is all helpful and we thank you for that. One more sign up sheet. We have a fundraiser at the end of August, August 26th. It is the Summer Sundry Sale. This will be a fundraiser that brings in vendors and community members as well as our own church to do different events on our premises. So we need some volunteers to help, help set things up, also to help kind of make vendors feel at home and welcome them and direct them. You'll get plenty of instructions before and on the day, but if you can sign up and kind of think about what kind of jobs you might be able to do. Uh, there's plenty of sit-down jobs that might be more self-explanatory. I would say kids games and set up cleanup might be more uh, active jobs. So we'll pass this around. There are also, if you know anyone who wants to be a vendor or have a booth, there are sign-up sheets on the back and there's extra little flyers as well so you can take one as a reminder for yourself and to pass around to the community. We have launch coming up September 10th. Launch Sunday is the day that we come together as a church and celebrate being church. We also kick off our new choir season and Sunday school season. So please mark your calendar. Plan to be at church September 10th to be a part of that celebration. We'll have breakfast at 9 a.m. and it will move into worship. Speaking of breakfast, next week we're going to have some coffee and donuts and play our Grow the Church game again at 9 a.m. So if you are able to come at 9 a.m. It is a nice, it is a very nice discussion game. No strategy involved. Highly competitive, I say, very jokingly. Yes. So please come. It's, it's very fun fellowship to be a part of that. Are there any other special announcements? Yes. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> um, Sunday the 10th. There is breakfast at 9. We will have choir practice, first one of the year, at 9.45 that day. And sing in church. We'll do something easy. You've done it before. You've sung it. Something we've yeah. sung before, no doubt. <laughs> Mary's favorite phrase. After that, choir practice will be after church. 
uh, that gets you in and out in one day so we're not all trying to come over on an evening or whatever all through the bad winter weather. And there was something else and I can't think of it. Oh, thank you again to everyone working in the fair. We had decent weather and they're setting records for attendance. Marion told us this morning that Thursday, other than the season tickets, which don't get counted in this, there were over 46,000 tickets sold just Thursday. Mm -hmm. So, yay. So, all the volunteer work has really helped. It is a great fundraiser for the church, and it's also just fun because you get to be more involved in the community and meet a lot of people. I mean, we have people from literally all over the world that visit the fair, so it's fun to, fun to witness that and be a part of it. I see another announcement brewing no, in the back. I'm not mad. Uh, the Boone County Fair is the largest county fair in the state of Illinois. Mm -hmm. Just in case y'all didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> so it is, it is great to be a part of it. Are there any other special announcements? Question, Question on the funeral luncheon. Yes. Are we doing cakes too? That's a wonderful idea. Because we always have it, there's no spot on it. That's right. That's why Pastor Muriel doesn't typically organize that. Thank you. If you would like to bring some kind of sweet, you can sign up as well. We're not quite sure for this funeral luncheon the amount of people they're expecting, so I'm asking everyone to sign your name and sign your phone number, and you'll get a call this week for, with more details. Are there any other? With that, let us enter into worship together as we join in our responsive welcome statement. At St. John's United Church of Christ, we are living outwardly and valuing everyone. We live and work amid God's love. In that spirit, we extend love to all who come into our midst. Regardless of sexual orientation, gender, identity, race, nationality, skin color, culture, differing abilities, age, or political affiliations to participate fully in all aspects of church. Our, Our ministry is to bring the good news of Christ's love to all. We work in God's name to tear down walls and build community. To walk with each other through all of life circumstances. To provide for those in need. To offer comfort to the hurting and the sick. And to uplift the brokenhearted. Where we fail, we ask for God's forgiveness. May the Holy Spirit and our siblings continue to challenge us to do better. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Please join me in our hymn, Lord, I lift your, I love you, Lord. We are so much. 
children of God, who can set skepticism down and take up the mantle of faithful presence. Please join me in hymn number 51, I Sing a Song of Bethlehem. today is in a boat and there's thunder and lightning all over the place as he's riding in this boat and guess what he's fast asleep 
Can you sleep through a thunderstorm? No? Well, Jesus could, and his friends were shocked, and they said, Jesus, wake up. Don't you care? There's a great thunderstorm. I know. No, 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 no. And Jesus woke up and said, why are you so upset? And the storm calms down. Throughout life, sometimes storms happen. You hear the thunder, and it startles you, and it makes you nervous. And you want to maybe hide in your home or hide in your bed. And sometimes there are storms that happen in our hearts and minds where we're anxious or worried. No. Sit. You want to sit? Good job. And when those kinds of storms happen in our hearts and minds, one of the things that we find is the best to help calm storms is to say a prayer and to remind ourselves how Jesus calms storms and prayer can help calm our storms. Are you making rain? Rubbing, rubbing. 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 Oh, that's what happened. Rubbing. Good job. Yeah, you're doing a good job. So, but another way that you. Yeah, another way we can say prayers is by singing. Did you know a lot of songs are prayers? So, we're going to have Miss Jean help us. And she is going to help us sing that song about remember rain our, from Bible school. Remember our rain song? Like the rain that falls, God our Father calls, speaking words of love gently from above. Remember that? Yeah. You want to sing it with everybody? And we can do our quiet rainstorm while we sing it. Rubbing, yeah. rubbing, rubbing. Rubbing, rubbing, rubbing. Yes. Okay. Start the rain a little bit. There we go. Okay. Like the rain that falls, God our Father calls, speaking words of love gently from above. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I missed it. I missed it. I got stuck in the shower. <laughs> That's beautiful. Good job. There you go. Yeah, you're so good at that. Now, we'll put our hands together like this, and we'll keep them quiet for a moment. And we'll give thanksgiving to God. Dear God, we thank you for peaceful and gentle showers. And we also thank you for the rain that blesses the earth and helps our flowers to grow. Dear God, as the rainstorms help the world to burst forth in life, we ask that you also help all the storms in our life to make us grow and become stronger in faith to you. Amen. 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 The nursery is open. We have a nursery helper. So if you'd like to go down today, you are welcome to. If you'd like to stay up, you are also welcome. Deal?
celebrations. May they be amplified in our gratitude for your many gifts so that we might be renewed and encouraged to go out and share blessings and gifts with others. For all of our sorrows and worries and hurts, dear God, may we lay them at your feet and recognize those which are your will for us and those which we need to let go. Gracious and wondrous God, you are the storm bringer and the storm calmer. We bring you life and you calm our souls. May we celebrate each part of the journey, even when the thunder rolls, when we, may we recognize your gifts and your actions and see your will through the storm. We pray these prayers as Christ teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And deliver us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Please join me in hymn number 407, How Firm a Foundation. <laughs>
Miracles are among us if we see ourselves with God's loving Jesus spoke to them and said, 
Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. And Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when Peter noticed the strong winds, he became frightened, and he began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, though why do you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind stopped, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. And our last reading is a section from the 85th Psalm. Let me hear what the God, the Lord, will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, who turn, those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet, and righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him, and will make a path for his steps. Lord, thank you for letting us hear your word this morning. Let it work in our hearts and our minds, all to your great glory. Amen. Amen. We know that life is filled with storms, and we will always have them and not be able to avoid them, nor do we want to because we know that they are part of the cycle of life, they're important. That being said, when you are in the midst of a storm, it is very hard not to look towards God and think, really? Right now, in this way, why so dramatic, why so big, why? And where are you? Jesus walks in storms with his disciples a number of times. We have the scripture today of Jesus walking on water, and then another scripture that we talk with the kids about, Jesus calming the storm after he was woken up from a very peaceful nap in the boat. Jesus calms these storms that are physical rainstorms, but we know, too, that it is a metaphor for life. The fact that God is continually calming storms and taking something dramatic and terrible and frightening for people and turning it into something that can be life-giving and renewing. We see this in nature as our gardens grow under a rainstorm. We see this in the Old Testament as well, because when we read scripture today of Joseph and his humble beginnings that are tragic and heartbreaking, going from the father's favorite to a slave, and then finding that God sees this storm in his life and uses it as a catalyst for something great where he saves his whole family. God may not make these storms happen in the dramatic and painful way that they do, but God certainly uses them as catalysts <laughs> for new life and goodness. And the truth is, is there is no storm that lasts forever. All storms come in waves, and they come and go, and as we live through them, we find peace knowing that there will be an end to them. At St. John's, we have an anxiety group where people talk about their anxiety attacks, their panic attacks, which are waves of emotion that often have no trigger and no meaning. They just come over a person and their heart rate pounds and their breath increases. Sometimes the body sweats and all of the hormones that your body gives off when they're sure they're gonna die are let loose on a human for no apparent reason. And these storms
storms wash up and over individuals, and there seems to be no control. But we remind each other, we remind <coughs> all that the storm will pass. Panic attacks can only last in their severest moments for about 20 minutes, and then it is downhill from there. And we talk about breathing and regulating and tricking bodies into remembering that everything is safe. And we will calm ourselves. <clears throat> but the truth is, is that calming ourselves is not always going to happen. Peter steps out onto the boat. His eyes are on Jesus. He thinks he's got this covered. He thinks he's got things under control. And then he realizes he never had the control to begin with. And in that panic moment, he begins to sink, and there seems to be no way out. So the sinking continues to happen. And then Christ reaches out his hand. No matter how sure we are in ourselves, no matter how powerful and how confident, the truth is that storms will come and many of them are out of our control. We might have actions we can take in the moment to calm ourselves, but sometimes it is important for us to let the storm roll by. To recognize what it is, recognize our own power in it, but then also recognize the power of God and nature and beauty, even in the ferocity of frightening moments. We have a God who is great and awesome, a God who knows how things have been and how things will become and has a will for us to follow to help make those new creations happen. We will see storms come and we will see storms go. The question is, what do we do in their midst? Today I set forth Psalm 85 verses 8 through 13 because feel we all need those scriptures that ground us in the moments of storms. And how beautiful is this reminder? So let us read it again. Let me hear God. The Lord will speak. For he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast and faithful love will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. May we go forth in life's storms and life's calm waters, knowing that steadfast love and faithfulness meet us in faith, that righteousness and peace will kiss each other in God's will, and we are a part of that beautiful connection. The Lord be with you. Every week as we gather, we recognize and celebrate the blessings that God has showered upon our, ourselves and our community. And so we take time to give back what we can. We give through our time and talents as we've been volunteering at the Boone County Fair and have been volunteering a number of
of creative and beautiful talents throughout the months. We also give through our treasures as we are able to give financially. And so this month we take a special offering, our second mile, that goes to Northern Illinois Hospice, which encourages and, and, commun and gives care to families as they walk with a loved one through the end of life, as well as caring for loved ones in that time. We also use our bronze plates for the general offering of St. John's to help in the continued ministries and missions of this church and our staff inside and beyond the walls. If you are able to give, we invite you to do so by putting Second Mile and Northern Illinois Hospice offering into the wood plates, general offering into the bronze plates. If you'd like to give online or through digital devices, you may do so by going to stjohns401.org. If you have nothing to place in the plate, please hold the plate and offer prayer, as it is one of our greatest gifts.
Thank you.